Welcome back to Let's Play Quantum Break. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'm actually back in the very first level in order to uh, collect a mist thing here, too. I've been thinking about it, by the way. I guess I should go find Paul. And I feel like the reason Martin Hatch is standing right here, now that I know more about him, is that he was instructed to make sure that... Uh, Jack made it to the experiment, okay. They probably started tracking him as soon as he arrived in the airport. Good morning. Yeah. Whatever you want. I don't have the time. I doubt he's out here. I'd better head into the campus. He said out loud. I'm gonna keep standing here and see if he just vanishes into thin air. Half expecting him to be gone, to be honest. Doing the Batman thing. Alright, let's see. It's in between the first radio and the Stop Monarch Problems poster. That should just be right over here. Oh, right, I don't have time vision. Heh! <laughs> Where'd that guy go? Huh, <laughs> he even comments on it! <laughs> Strange. I have a theory about that, by the way. Did I not talk to you the first time around? <laughs> Rough night, huh? This dude can't be the thing. Oh, it's for... Um, I, it's just whatever doesn't even matter anymore. I'm... I'm yeah. The, uh... I have this crazy theory based on that last live-action video that Hatch might be a shifter. Maybe he's using those chronon-laced eye drops to, uh... Paul! Jack! I just got to the campus. Where are you? To, uh, keep himself stabilized uh, instead of flipping out all over the place. Modern physics building with the lights on. I'll meet you inside there. I am so looking forward to this, man. You still haven't told me what this is. I know. See you soon. Why 4 a.m.? Why not wait till morning? Paul had always been a showman. That's vaguely ominous. No idea what this one's supposed to be. I thought I would have more knowledge, but no. And off the beaten track. What's over there? For example. Anything? Rub my face into every corner. Hockey team tryouts. Okay, there's the radio. Urine. And I'm stuck. It was the way that uh, Hatch was telling Dr. Kim, it's time for you to return to the others, to return to the infinite. Hey, do you know where the physics building is? I did talk to You mean guy. the big-ass metallic turtle behind me? Hard to miss, man. Thanks. Babe, Some protest. Hmm. This is less exciting than I hoped it would be. To be honest, I kind of hoped I'd just drop in, find the thing, and be done with it, but... Hey, it's 
Protests seemed like a lost cause. Made me sympathize with the students. Talking to Amy. Monarch Timeline. Alan Wake video. Oh, hey. I didn't see you there. It's not a lake. It's an ocean. I really, really hope that, uh... Remedy get to make Alan Wake 2 someday. Apparently they're basically being held back by Microsoft. Who don't want to publish. Yeah, they have exclusive publishing rights. Even though Remedy still owns the IPs. So if... My Microsoft don't feel like footing the bill for... Are you the thing? Sophia Amaral seminar poster. Okay, remember if I heard this or not. Guest seminar, Dr. Sophia Amaral, Thursday, September 29th, 7 p.m. at the Henry Kim Theater. The recently appointed head of Monarch Solutions Physics Research Division, Dr. Sophia Amaral, has taken much of her inspiration from the theories of River Report's own Dr. William Joyce, and now devotes herself to discovering practical applications for chronon particles. Her presentation will highlight the evolution of chronon particle research and be followed by a Q&A focused on career advice for aspiring physicists. Nice. Yeah, Microsoft don't want to make, uh, don't want to publish sequels to Alan Wake or Quantum Break, so uh, Remedy don't get to make them. Sucks. I meant to mention last time, or a few times ago, actually, that uh. Uh, Remedy are currently working on a new game called Control, which appears to be, you know, sort of still in their wheelhouse. It's third-person shooting, there's some weird, crazy shit going on, and it looks like they, they give you a series of abilities that are... I, I, a lot of people compare them to the stuff in, uh, in Quantum Break, but I kind of can't make heads or tails out of the trailer myself. You need to hand this technology over to Monarch. I've prepared for what happens next. You say you're oh, and uh, the no main character in that game is uh, played by the same actress who plays uh, Beth in this game. So that's the end of time is coming. There's no way to... Hey! This isn't a debate. I just watched a ship fast forward through a fucking bridge. Time is running out. And the fracture's getting worse by the minute. You know, and it cannot be stopped. I was thinking. Paul has been to the end of time. You could probably do a pretty good Alan Wake cosplay with some, you know, gray jeans, uh, a Your tweed shirt, a tweed jacket. Jokes. Story with leather patches on the shoulders, him. a flashlight, and a gun. He knew that the fracture would occur, but he. You, know, you could also do the uh, American Nightmare shirt uh, outfit with like the flannel shirt and the. Uh, Will built a way to stop the fracture. On the blue jeans. As long as he had the flashlight and the, uh, the, the gun. Measure. But, uh, Jack it's here? Jack's to just... To retrieve kind of wearing regular-ass clothes. You can help us get there faster. And he doesn't have, like, a signature element that he can carry oh. around. Unless you can make you little fractal patterns read. appear around your hand. That would be a, a pretty good cosplay. <laughs> I'll have to run diagnostics on the machine. I can't promise anything before that. I'm just letting this run, because if I don't, it'll just be a loading screen anyway, and I figure this is more exciting to look at. Okay, doctor, let's go. I mean... Oh no! I guess I just finished loading by then. Jack, before we head downstairs, we have to talk about something. She's gonna give him the birds and the bees talk. Alright, let's do this. Okay, what's up? It's about the plan. If Amaral gets the machine working... We go back to yesterday and undo all of this. Listen, in the video Will left for me, he said the countermeasure was stolen from his workshop on July 4th, 2010. He also said I took it. 
Maybe I did, Jack. We have a time machine. You're saying we go to 2010. We steal it. If Will was right, that would mean it wouldn't be a change. We take the countermeasure, bring it to the present, fix the fracture, save the world. Okay. Explain to me why that's a better plan than just going back to yesterday and preventing all this from happening in the first place. Because I'm afraid that based on what I know about time travel, we can't change anything. The past has already happened. We can't change it. But my way, we don't have to. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, my plan still feels simpler. Let's just get the machine working. Beth's 2010 plan. Beth's charts and plans for the plan to travel to 2010 and steal the countermeasure. Does it count as changing the past if... Uh... Hmm. Does it count as changing the past that Serene got the date wrong in his uh, plan to... Oh, yeah, the weed plants. Got the dates wrong when he was preparing for the end of time. I mean, it's possible that he never actually saw the dates while he was in the end of time. And that his calculations were wrong, or that they made it worse with all the chronon harvesting they did. You know, since the problem with the fracture is that the Mayor Joyce Field stops creating chronons and the world, uh... Kind of goes to shit without them. This was the guy delivering the speech at the gala. Name's Martin Hatch. According to Monarch Radio, he's been deemed a traitor. Sabotaged a Monarch lab. Potential ally? Not even close. Man, he's way dumber than we are. Martin Hatch dossier. What we know. You know what? I'll just go in here so I don't get yelled at. Martin Hatch, what we know. Facts gathered by Fiona Miller so far. Joined Monarch 2001. Became Serene's chief advisor around 2007. No records before 2001. Who was he? Where did he come from? You see, yeah, that would play into the, uh, the, the shifter thing, because if I was right, I think he followed Serene back from the end of time. You know, through the time machine, I mean. Get back in there, champ, says my laws and drapper. Uh, yeah, no records for 2001. Where was he? Who was he? Where did he come from? Working against Monarch? Possible links to the following. Death of Dr. Kim. Unconfirmed. Alone with Dr. Kim at time of death. Death occurred just as Kim was on the verge of a solution to Serene's time sickness. University time machine sabotage. Unconfirmed. Miscalculations on purpose? Hatch seen in lab. Uh, assistance in Sophia's kidnapping? Confirmed. What? No. We kidnapped Sophia. We know he didn't actually do that. Distracted monarchal kidnapping occurred. Knew we were coming. Did not alert Serene. Yeah, he was trying to kill her at the time. Whatever. Uh, destruction of Serene's remaining sickness treatments unconfirmed. Was present outside Dr. Kim's lab and the lab was destroyed. Accused Sophia of being responsible for this. Helped Charlie Wincott escape. Confirmed. Currently helping Charlie reach Monarch Tower undetected. Disobey direct orders from Paul Serene. Wants access to CFR. Potentially desires to sabotage lifeboat protocol. Sabotaging Serene. Motive. Secretly assuring Serene's downfall. Wants to take over Monarch. Why? Sabotaging Monarch's survival plan from within. No possible reason for this. Doesn't believe countermeasure could stop fracture. Not a potential ally. Works for Monarch. Therefore believes end of time is inevitable. Then why attempt to sabotage lifeboat protocol? I think he's doing it because... He wants to ensure the end of time happens so that the shifters can rule what's left. Photo origins unknown. Hello, Riverport. Well, it's been a rough night for us. The collision at the Port Donnelly Bridge that has claimed multiple lives is still being investigated. At least a dozen people are confirmed dead, and investigators say they expect to find more bodies, some of which are predicted to be found in the cars at the bottom of the river. In before the Jack Joyce. The accident remains unclear. 
Adding to the confusion are conflicting reports from shipboard personnel and those on dry land. The captain of the cargo ship insists that the bridge was up and the route was clear. However, some people shoreside claim the cargo ship was approaching the bridge at high speed, despite the bridge having not yet been raised. Others express surprise at the ship's presence, claiming that they do not see its approach at all. The investigation is still ongoing. We'll keep you posted. Now, obviously, this disaster will affect us in more ways than one. With the Port Donnelly Bridge out of commission, heavy congestion is expected on the other routes across the river, and we now have reports coming in of multiple car crashes all over Riverport. So you will want to reserve enough time for your trip today if you're traveling by car. Stay safe out there. Hopefully we can all get back to normal soon. By the time the sun goes down today, if those uh, estimations are correct, Either everything will be back to normal, or everyone will be dead forever. Holy shit, have we left that thing on this whole time? We're gonna get fucking time wraiths coming out. Dr. Amaral seems convinced that Paul's been to the end of time. Do you think that's true? Can't be. Otherwise, trying to prevent it would be pointless. Why? Because it's already happened. Stupid time loops. This is exactly what I mean, for the record. Hey, Jack, maybe this would be a good time to mention all those emails you found. Let's see how Dr. Amaral's doing with the time machine. About how, uh... Yeah. Time is ending today. I don't think we can trust her. The way she looked at the countermeasure like she's seen it before. She knows what it does. You think Will told her about it? No. Will was never the kind to open up. Like I said, those... Will takes it to the next level. When we were kids, the only way that Will could express anything important to me was by informing my stuffed giraffe when I was in the room. Like I said, those uh, things with Amaral and the, the, the Junction previews, those are not necessarily mutually exclusive. He just said the line about how we can't trust her, but it's possible we could still hear her agree to help us. Like I said, it shouldn't make a difference which, you know, uh, which person uh, Paul Serene chooses to trust at a distance. I haven't detected any Chronon sources yet. I'm in the ladies' room. Tee -hee! I'm not supposed to be in here. I'll be honest, I was not expecting this much beer. There was a, a Chronon source in this room the first time I came here. Your machine is totally fucked. Did she find anything? I'm not sure. I'll go check. You've got to see this. Oh, hey, Amy. I wasn't sure you'd be in the game again. Hey, shouldn't you be keeping an eye on Amaral? Okay, but first, you need to check out the intel I uncovered. Angry Birds is written by extraterrestrials. All right. What is all this? Probably see how Dr. Amaral's doing. I uploaded all the files I stole on that USB stick from the Monarch Security Station. I also found a video of your brother. It's on that TV. You're gonna want to see it. Everything else I printed out and put on tables over there.
Don't stand so close, kids. Okay. The date is... Oh, the date is... It's... It's February 28th. Jesus, Will. William Joyce. 1999. After months... First experiment. Arduous work. My machine is finally ready for human testing. Ready is defined by me since ready is obviously a relative term when you're dealing with the deformation of the chronon field and recreating of black hole's mass density by, you know, tangent. Okay, in short summary, I built a time machine and it works. I'm gonna prove it or die. Okay, just need to make some final preparations. When I enter the machine, I will travel clockwise Around the corridor. Okay. Core is active. Chronon levels are stable. Travel clockwise around the corridor, exiting back into the same location in the near future. Oh. This clock is set to my watch. Now, when I exit the machine, there should be a significant difference in time between my watch and the clock in this room. Corridor. It's locked in place. Okay. Setting the date to five minutes to the future for the first test. Now, admittedly, traveling to the past would be much more impressive. But I can travel backwards in time only as far as the first activation of the machine's core, which is, well, now. Okay. Machine's ready. Monitor is stable. What I'm about to do is gonna change the very fabric of Oh, I get it. Serene. <laughs> Serene came through. Beth came through after him. And she accidentally shot Will. Because he just set the machine to go back as far as it could possibly go. But what's on the computer? Monarch files I uploaded, and I kept the juiciest stuff on screen for you. Oh, God. Sorry about that. Um, game alt tab by itself. Let's read that uh, email and call it an episode. Ooh, a ripple. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, here we go. What's this, Manuel Poretta? Well, we'll find out. Uh, Paul Serene to Sophia Amaral, February 28th, 2013, 6.22 in the morning. I guess right after he woke up. Subject, Dream Journal 5. My fifth entry. I recall moving through a wheat field that once belonged to my grandparents. I pressed the wheat stalks to the side with my hands, softly sifting through them at first. But as I pressed forward, the stalks began to warp and curl around my arms, providing resistance to my every move. The entire field began to solidify into an unbreakable material with my body entangled in the mess. I desperately tried to pull myself free, but every movement led to a burning sensation. The world desaturated. Time stopped. I heard the unmistakable sound of my greatest fear approaching. Shifters. They emerged from all sides, surrounding me. I looked into the distance and saw a blurry figure approaching. He tried to yell, but the words wouldn't escape his throat, instead transforming into an endless shriek pulsing through my ears. His every movement and sound transformed into an agonizing discomfort all throughout my body until it became completely unbearable. The pain trumped logic. I needed to make it stop. I needed to make it all stop. I grew violent, blindly lashing out at the figure, tearing him apart. I needed to destroy the source of motion and sound that caused me such discomfort. The pain stopped as I took the figure's life, and as he died, his identity became clear. It was me. I had become the very threat I once feared, but I did not fear anymore. I felt something very clear, very pure. I turned around to discover Jack behind me. He didn't move, but I could somehow understand his intent. He welcomed me. Every misunderstanding, all the pain we had caused one another was forgotten. We were part of a higher consciousness. I heard a voice behind me. Dr. Kim. He joined us. He told me that time was once the fire in which we burned. He told me we would burn no more. 
From Sofia Amaral to Manuel Porretta, February 28, 2013, 8.35 a.m. Dr. Porretta, I am attaching Paul Serene's most recent entry in his dream journal. I am growing increasingly concerned with the meaning behind these dreams, but I need a second opinion. I can treat Paul's sickness. Really, as far as I can determine, the Cronon Syndrome is more a metaphysical condition than an actual medical issue. But I'm a physicist. I'm very much out of my depth with all this. This exercise has helped alleviate stress to ease Paul's symptoms, but so far, it has resulted in the obvious. The obvious. The opposite. Time is of the essence. His condition is getting worse by the day. Dr. Sophia Amaral, head of research. I remember Manuel Porretta now. He was the guy doing psyche valves and the strikers. I really like how all this stuff ties together. Well, I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you in the next episode of Let's Play Quantum Break when we uh, find that ripple. Later.